Hello, and welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we'll be covering Chapter 9, Cellular Respiration. Okay, Section 9-1, Chemical Pathways. So, chemical energy in food, we need to first learn about chemical energy in food. So, one gram of, sh of the sugar glucose, when burned in the presence of oxygen, releases 3,811 calories of heat energy. And a calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. And that's a calorie with a lowercase c. A calorie with an uppercase c is 1,000 calories. Now, our cells don't burn the glucose they have. They gradually release energy from it and other food compounds. And that process begins with glycolysis. So glycolysis re releases only a small amount of energy. And if oxygen is present, glycolysis will lead down... Uh, down the Krebs cycle to the electron uh, transport chain, and if oxygen is not present, it, go, it uh, leads to fermentation. Okay, a quick overview of cellular respiration. In the presence of oxygen, glycolysis is followed by Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, like I just said. Um, and those three processes make up a uh, the make up cellular respiration. And cellular respiration is defined as the process that releases energy by breaking down glucose and other food molecules in the presence of oxygen. And the equation for cellular respiration is six oxygen molecules plus one glucose uh, will are turned into six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, and energy. And this isn't one step. It is that equation is the equation for all three of the process. Okay. So glycolysis. Glycolysis is the process in which one molecule of glucose is broken in half, producing two molecules of pyruvic acid, a three-carbon compound. And the electrons go to the electron transport chain, while the pyruvic acid go to the Krebs cycle. So the ATP in that is used and produced in glycolysis is relatively small. It takes two ATP molecules to start the glycolysis cycle, and at the end it produces four ATP molecules for a net gain of two ATP. Now this doesn't sound like a lot of ATP, but cells can produce thousands of ATP molecules in just a few milliseconds. However, the other, product, the other molecule needed, NAD+, um, it, the cells run out of it fairly quickly. So the NADH production then is one reaction will remove four high energy electrons and passes them to an electron carrier called NAD+, which is uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and that transforms it to NADH, which is a high energy electron carrier. So if they had an abundance of NAD+, cells could run glycolysis forever and produce uh, mass amounts of energy. But, un but it runs out, as I said earlier, in a few seconds. Okay, so fermentation is what happens when there is no oxygen present after glycolysis. And it's considered an anaerobic uh, process, which means without oxygen. So fermentation releases energy from food molecules by producing ATP in the absence of oxygen. These cells convert NADH, the high, the high energy electron carrier, to NAD plus by passing high energy electrons back to the pyruvic acid. So there are two main types of fermentation. There's alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Alcoholic fermentation is used by yeast and a few other microorganisms and it forms ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. And the equation for that is pyruvic acid plus NADH is turned into alcohol, carbon dioxide, and NAD+. Then there's lactic acid fermentation. So that converts pyruvic acid into lactic acid. And this regenerates NAD+, so glycolysis can continue. The equation for that is uh, pyruvic acid plus NADH turns into lactic acid and NAD+. So this is, uh, lactic acid is what happens in, your, in the muscle cells during exercise. Your muscle cells produce an excess of lactic acid because they're starved for oxygen when you are uh, exercising. Okay, 9-2, the Krebs cycle and electron transport. So this is the aerobic pathway for uh, glycolysis. This is when there is oxygen present. The uh, next step would be the Krebs cycle followed by the electron transport chain. So at the end of glycolysis, about 90% of the chemical energy that was available in glucose is still unused. And to extract the rest, the cells must use oxygen. So the cells start with the Krebs cycle. 
And this is the second stage of cellular respiration. It's named after Hans Krebs, the British biochemist who demonstrated its existence in 1937. During the Krebs cycle, pyruvic acid is broken down into carbon dioxide in a series of energy extracting reactions. And there are two main steps, citric acid production and energy extraction. So these are a lot, so make sure you follow along closely. So for citric acid production, as the pyruvic acid enters the mitochondria, a carbon is removed, forming CO2, which is then released into the air later. The electrons are removed and change NADH to NAD or NAD plus, excuse me, to NADH. The coenzyme A joins the two carbon molecule, forming acetyl CoA, and acetyl CoA then adds two carbon uh, acetyl groups to a four carbon compound, forming citric acid. So after that, we have energy extraction. And energy extraction is the citric acid is broken down into a five carbon compound, then into a four, common co four carbon compound. Along the way, two more molecules of CO2 are released. And the electrons join uh, NADH and FAD, which is flavine, flavine adenine dinucleotide, forming NADH and FADH2. So FAD and FADH2 are just similar electron car are electron car carriers similar to NAD plus and NADH. And then in addition to this, one molecule of ATP is generated. The energy from the molecule of pyruvic acid is four NADH, one FADH2, and one molecule of ATP. So here we can see the graph. We start or, or we can see some of the N, the products. We have the CO2 here, the NAD plus changed into the NADH uh, here and here. ADP is given another phosphate group and turned into ATP. FAD is turned into FADH square, uh, FADH2, and the same with NAD plus is turned into NH, NADH there again. Okay, the electron transport chain. So this is the next step in uh, the cellular respiration. And the, electro the electrons carried by NADH and FADH2 are passed to the electron transport chain. We can see that here. Uh, the electron transport chain uses the high energy electrons from the Krebs cycle to convert ADP to ATP. So there are three main steps, electron transport, hydrogen ion movement, and ATP production. So electron transport. The high energy electrons are passed along the electron transport system. In eukaryotes, the electron transport system is composed of a series of carrier proteins located in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. In prokaryotes, the same chain is in the cell membrane. So high energy electrons are passed from one carrier protein to an the next. And at the end, an enzyme combines these electrons with hydrogen ions and oxygen to form water. So oxygen serves as the final electron acceptor of the electron transport chain, and it's also essential for getting rid of low energy electrons and hydrogen ions, the waste of cellular respiration. Next we have the hydrogen ion movement. So every time two high energy electrons are transported down the electron transport chain, their energy is used to transport hydrogen ions across the membrane. So during electron transport, the hydrogen ions build up in the intermembrane space, making it positively charged, while the other side becomes negative. So ATP production, the third and final step. The inner membrane of the mitochondria contains protein spheres called ATP synthase, which we discussed in an earlier chapter. As the hydrogen ions escape through the ATP synthase, it spins or it rotates, and each time it rotates, the, it grabs a low energy ADP, attaches a phosphate, and forms ATP. We can see that here. These would be, this would be the ATP synthase, and as the hydrogen ions escape, it grabs an ADP, adds the phosphate group to form ATP, the uh, energy, final energy product. Okay, so the, the totals of this. So glycolysis produces just two ATP molecules uh, per molecule of glucose. However, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain produce 36 ATP per glucose molecule, 18 more than can be generated without oxygen. So it's not just glucose. They take uh, large complex carbohydrates that are eaten and then are broken down into simple sugars. However, the 36 ATP represent only 38% of the total energy of glucose. The other 62% is released as heat and is uh, unable to be produced or turned into ATP.
So energy and exercise. So we use the ATP for energy. There's quick energy, which is when we use up the stored energy we have in a few quick seconds. Uh, that is quick energy, and then muscle cells start lactic acid fermentation uh, to produce more energy. And this lasts for about 90 seconds, so you could run hypothetically 400 meters using lactic acid fermentation. And this then produces lactic acid as a by byproduct, which requires extra oxygen to uh, remove from your body. This is why you see runners breathing heavily. The more oxygen they get, the quicker the lactic acid buildup is dispersed. And then long-term energy. So the body stores glycogen, which is a uh, glucose uh, carbohydrate, and then by breaking that down, it can uh, it will produce uh, that breaking it down produces glucose, which is then put into uh, the cellular respiration. However, this can this doesn't last for very long either. And then after the body uses up its stores of glycogen, it breaks down fats and other. Uh, molecules in the body for energy. Okay, let's compare photosynthesis and cellular respiration. As we can see from the diagram, photosynthesis takes in light, water, and CO2 and produces oxygen and glucose. Now, we see in cellular respiration, it takes glucose, oxygen, and it produces is CO2, water, heat, and ATP. So we can see that the two processes are very closely linked. It's easy to think of it as photosynthesis deposits energy while the cellular respiration withdraws the energy. Okay, let's go to key concepts. So the key concepts for chapter 9. Describe the process of cellular respiration. What are the products of glycolysis? Name the two main types of fermentation. What happens to pyruvic acid during the Krebs cycle? And how does the electron transport chain use high energy electrons from the Krebs cycle? Alright, that's it for chapter 9.